Uh, let's give it up for Tim Lancia. Pronounce that right? Lancina. Uh, and he's speaking about handling the keyboard in hybrid applications. <clears throat> All right, thanks, Steve. Is this on? Can everybody hear me okay? Um, so yeah, I'm really excited to be here today. Thanks PhoneGap for having me uh, here in beautiful Amsterdam to talk to you today about handling the keyboard in hybrid applications. So who am I? My name is Tim Lancina. I work on the Ionic team on our tooling, which means I build the things that we create to help you create awesome apps using the framework. Um, you should follow me on Twitter, at, at Tim Lancina. <coughs> so what is the goal when building hybrid applications. <coughs> we really, it's pretty simple. We want to build apps that look and feel like native apps. Um, and so that means adhering to the platform specific styles, <coughs> excuse me, and following the, the UI best practices of the platforms we're targeting. Um, and so, you know, we want to create UIs that are consistent with what a user expects from a native application. And that's, that's everything, not just the, the interfaces, but everything about the app. Transitions, animations, the style, duration, um, gestures, all of it. Um, so, <coughs> oops. What we really are trying to uh, avoid is this kind of hybrid uncanny valley effect. Um, and I think the, the traditional definition of the uncanny valley is maybe a little strong in that I don't think any hybrid developer has ever felt revulsion uh, when using an app, uh, no matter how bad the app. Um, but what we really want to avoid is kind of negatively impacting the user's experience by not meeting their expectations of, you know, how a native app should look and feel. Uh, so just a, a note, I'm just going to be talking about iOS today. Uh, just there's a lot to cover um, on the keyboard. So how does this relate to using the keyboard? Um, well, there are some pretty major differences between mobile web and native apps when it comes to the keyboard appearing on screen. Um, and this is mainly to do with the fact that there's, there's very little exposed to the browser in regards to handling the appearance of the keyboard. Um, so as you can see, you know, we have the Facebook native app and the Facebook mobile web app. And when the keyboard appears on the web, there's very little expectation that it necessarily looks good. It's mainly just needs to, to remain usable. Um, <coughs> and so what this means is in a hybrid environment where our goal is to look and feel as native as possible, we kind of have these unfortunate defaults right out of the box um, with, with the web view. Um, and so similar to kind of removing the 300 millisecond tap delay in order to you know, bring the, the expectation up to that, that level of quality of a native app, what can we do to kind of make the appearance of the keyboard in line with that, that native experience? So I'm going to look <coughs> today through some of the, the current solutions for you know, bringing the, the appearance of the keyboard in line with what we expect from a native application and kind of look towards you know, potential future improvements that we can make as well. So the first problem is this, this input accessory bar. Um, that appears by default whenever the keyboard appears in a web view. And so <coughs> it doesn't necessarily break anything, but in the already kind of space-constrained mobile environment, um, it does use up some like precious screen space. And also, if our goal is to appear as native as possible, we would like to have the ability to kind of toggle its appearance, because by default, native text fields don't have any, any toolbar. So we do have the ability to remove it, but kind of with some caveats. So <clears throat> because there's no public API exposed um, on the web view to remove this toolbar, we kind of have to rely on the fact that iOS actually allows you to modify method implementations at runtime um, with this awesome name of swizzling. Um, so what we can do is actually replace the getter for that toolbar with a function. Thanks, man. Um, is replace the, uh, the, met the getter for that toolbar with a function that returns null. Um, so unfortunately, the, ca the class that we're replacing this, uh, this method on is private. So we start to kind of enter the gray zone of what Apple gets unhappy about. Uh, but this is the, the only solution that works guaranteed 100% of the time. <coughs> so what if, 
you know, what if we don't want to use a private class? What are our options? So um, a solution that's looking kind of increasingly promising but still needs some more work and, and has a few edge cases that need to be worked out is to actually use a native input um, overlaid and synced up with an HTML input um, in the web view. So by default, this kind of trivially solves the issue of the, the toolbar appearing in that native inputs have no accessory bar um, when they're focused. So the third solution isn't necessarily a solution. It's just that, as I said before, the, the toolbar doesn't necessarily break anything. Um, and there are native inputs that, that have toolbars associated with the keyboard when they, when they receive focus. Um, so you know, it, it's not going to kill your app. But if the goal is to appear and feel as native as possible, we would at least like the ability to remove that toolbar. So the second problem, and this is probably the biggest one when it comes to hybrid applications, is the default behavior when an input is focused is to have the web view scroll its entire self up um, off the screen in order to bring that input into view. And this is problematic because if we expect our kind of UI to remain stable and you know, keep our header in place, uh, this looks really bad and messes our layout up. So <clears throat> what can we do about it? Um, the first thing, and this is probably the most important slide I'm going to show you today, is um, you know, be, be conscious of how the keyboard is going to affect the layout of your app when you're designing your app. Um, so in general, it's a, it's a good practice on mobile to kind of keep your inputs to a minimum. Um, you know, dealing with inputs that are below where the keyboard is going to appear is something that native apps also have to deal with. Um, and so it's just, in general, it's a good practice to kind of keep the inputs or input that you're requiring from your users to a minimum. And if you do need to collect user input, try and keep those inputs above where the keyboard is going to be. Um, it's much easier to not even have to worry about the keyboard messing up your layout if it just isn't a problem that exists because your inputs are above where the keyboard is going to be. So this is actually an example of the, the Snapchat app, which has a settings page that on a mobile web app could easily be a long form that would have inputs that are below the keyboard. Uh, but instead, it's just kind of an example of more keyboard conscious design in the sense that it navigates for each input item to a new page where those inputs are always above the keyboard. So obviously, this isn't always the case that you can avoid having inputs that are covered by the keyboard. So let's take a look at some of the things you can do to kind of deal with <coughs> what happens in a hybrid app uh, when the keyboard appears. So one of the things you can do is actually shrink the web view itself. And this is pretty common in native applications as well. Um, it allows the content to then be scrolled um, to bring that input into view. But it also means that your, your footer is automatically going to be visible on the screen. Um, so I say it's a, a little finicky in that <clears throat> the web view can resize and animate with the appearance of the keyboard. However, the content in the web view will not animate. So you get kind of this flicker effect that doesn't always look, uh, look the best. So another option we have, and this is kind of a more hybrid approach, is to basically hand off the responsibility of adjusting the layout to the JavaScript layer. Um, so what we do is um, first prevent the native UI scroll view from shifting that entire web view up and off the screen. Um, and so then as you see, you know, the problem is then that the input remains covered. And so then what we can do is actually pass over the Cordova bridge what the height of the keyboard is going to be to JavaScript, and then from JavaScript just make any sort of content adjustments that you see fit. So if you want to move the, the footer up, if you have an input at the bottom, like a, a messaging style app, you can adjust those. Um, you can also just adjust the scrollable content area and leave the footer uh, down below. It's, it's just a lot easier to not mess with the kind of native frame resizing and handle everything in the, the kind of web layer that I think a lot of hybrid developers are more comfortable in. <coughs> so similar to the kind of accessory bar solution, um, another option is to use a native input. Um, and actually, Eddie for Bruggen has a really cool plugin that I don't think is officially released yet, but um, has some really awesome promise that allows you to actually have a native input that uh, rides on top of the keyboard, and then you can pass anything that's entered in that, that native text field back to, to JavaScript. And so this is awesome for solving the case of that, that animation of the web view not being in sync with the keyboard, because you get the native animation that goes along with the, the native text input. So again, <clears throat> this approach of using native inputs is still kind of experimental um, in that there are some edge cases, but you know, for, the, 
for the scenario of kind of a chat style application, this is a, a really good use of uh, native components. So the last problem is um, you know, being able to customize the keyboard. So by default, native apps um, have kind of a lot of various ways to customize the keyboard's appearance and behavior. Um, and so if our goal is to really you know, mimic and look and feel as much like a native app as possible, then our goal should also be to you know, expose the ability to customize the keyboard to our apps. Um, and so there's, there's a pretty large feature set of things that you can manipulate in a native app, um, which we would also like to be able to do in, in hybrid apps. So the traditional solution in web views is to kind of use this very limited subset uh, that is exposed by HTML inputs, so just through using input attributes. Um, but this doesn't really give you, give you a lot. Um, you can change kind of the, the look of the keyboard from like a numeric uh, keyboard or kind of email keyboard as well. Um, but you can't change the keyboard color. You can't change the return key text or functionality or anything like that. So, you know, going back to this solution that we've now seen in, in the other two issues as well, using a native input, because all of these uh, customizations are exposed by the input itself, you know, the only way we're going to be able to do this is kind of using this approach of overlaying um, a native input over and syncing it with a, an HTML input. So, again, this is still pretty experimental um, in that there are a lot of edge cases. It's a little difficult to handle the, the caret and, and I think text areas are a little iffy, but it's definitely kind of an exciting new perspective way to bring hybrid apps, you know, one step closer to that kind of native look and feel that, that we're always striving for. So I would uh, highly recommend checking out the, the plugin that Eddie has uh, that allows you to use native inputs in, in a web view. So <clears throat> in summary, you want to try and keep your inputs above the keyboard as much as possible. Um, and you know, practicing good design is going to allow you to not have to deal with the headaches. Um, you know, native applications have to deal with inputs that are below the keyboard as well. Um, <coughs> sorry, excuse me. But it's especially important to remain conscious of it in a hybrid environment where the, the tools that we have at our disposal are a little more limited than a traditional native application. So you have to kind of design to the platform you're working on. And so if that's not possible, then adjust to your needs. You know, if you're, if you're doing a chat style application, you may want to consider using a native input, which is something that I don't think we've seen a ton of, but is pretty exciting in that it gives you full control over customization um, of the keyboard as well as you know, the native animations. Um, and then if that's not viable because of either the edge cases or issues that you run into, then you know, it's better to kind of leave messing around with the native views out of the picture and just hand everything off to, to JavaScript so that you can adjust your layout accordingly as you see fit. So thank you very much for having me. Uh, if you guys, I don't know if we have time for questions, but um, yeah, thanks to everyone who helped out with this, and thanks for PhoneGap for having me here today. Thank <laughs> you.